y'all. Welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. Today we're going to make some wild lettuce medicine and some plantain salve. Uh, it's time to get a lot of this done and there's been a lot of questions on the the wild lettuce tar that I made. Uh, a lot of different questions. We'll try to answer some of that while we're making this. Um, I have some wild lettuce right here that is very large that in some of the last storms all of this laid over. You can see I cut me a limb and propped my willow up so that it would grow straight. Um, but a lot of this laid over just from the, I mean, we had like 10 inches of rain within a couple of days here a week ago. So what I'm gonna do is cut the whole stalk of these, there's like four or five of these plants. And most of this is Lactuca Floridana. However, there is some Seriola in here. I don't have a lot of the virosa. I've had people ask me about that. But here's the thing, you guys. There's not a drastic amount of difference in these varieties with the potency of the medicine you're going to make. Um, by far, the best way to make and use wild lettuce is just simply make a tea. This tar is more about preservation if you don't want to make a tincture. So let's harvest this. Let's take it up there and get out of this hot sun. It's early morning, which is not really early. It's probably 8.30 by now, and it is already blistering hot. So let's cut this and get up there with it. I'm going to go ahead and cut all of this that is laying down because I need to do something with it anyway. So, you can see now I have quite a bit of it. So let's take it up here and let's make some medicine, y'all. See if we can get all that fit up on the table. I have a pot here that I'm going to start this in. Um, and I normally try to use some rainwater. Uh, it, I don't think it's going to hurt anything if you use tap water. Use whatever you want to, okay? Let me get something over here to set this on since this took up my whole table. I got my canoe rack over here. Oh, well, see how this, after it laid down, it kept growing and it growed bent. So now I have a, it don't want to lay up here right. So for starters, I'm just going to pick, and now this brown, I'm throwing it away. I just, I don't want it. The yellow, I don't want. So I'm going to pull all of this brown and yellow off, pull the pine straw out of it, damage the leaves. It's probably not going to hurt anything. I just don't want it in my medicine. Um, the stalk is very medicinal. That is where most of your lactuca is. You see it coming out of there. Y'all, by far, the best medicine is right here. Take that, lick it. Now, I am not hurting today. I don't really need the medicine. But you see how much is draining off And I've heard people try to come in and say that, oh, this variety won't do this. And you, you gotta have the prickles. And as far as prickles go, y'all, there is some fine hairs, not a lot of light spikes you're gonna feel. So the big question that everybody has asked about this is, okay, once you've made a tar, how much do you take? I normally take about a I don't know, half a tablespoonful, maybe. Oh. It, it don't take a lot. Now, the whether you want to make a tar or a tincture or, or whatever, a lot of that has to do with personal preference. I'm not going to sit here and try to convince you that one way is better than the other. 
my opinion, the most practical way is why this is growing is to, honestly, is to, you see all the lacticarium coming out of that stalk. There's a lot of medicine in this stalk. It is very bitter. One thing I'm going to attempt to do, since I have so much of this plant, is we're going to get the juicer out. We're going to put some of it in a juicer and see what we acquire out of it and see what it does. I had a lot of people asking, can you use a juicer? The juicer removes a lot of the plant material. And where the medicinal properties lie in this plant is really kind of hard to say. Because I want you to see in this plant, this very outside skin is where the medicine is. So let me get all this picked off and then I'll, I'll bring you back. So I have all my plant picked off. I've saved the stems. We're going to probably cut them stems up and cook them down in the, the pot too. Uh, Cause that, that bunch of material will cook down. But now you see all, I have my juicer out here. So we're going to process a little of this material in the juicer just to see what we get. We're doing some experiment. Uh, we'll probably make the, the plantain salve. I'm going to add self here with it. We're probably going to do a separate video for that because you know how these videos, they'll get really long. Uh, and y'all, it is hot out here. It's hotter than two rats and a wool sock fighting over a jalapeno pepper in the attic. I'm telling you, it's hot. So anyway, we're going to get some of this done. I've got my cutting board right here. I'm going to start chopping some of this material up and get it in this pot and then we'll add some water and then I'm go I've got a hot plate right down here that we're going to use to put it on because I don't want to light my fish cooker up. It'd just get entirely too hot with all that going on. All right, for starters, we're just going to start putting it up here. Take your plan in there and wash it real good. I don't show everything, but you need to wash it, whatever's on it off, dirt, such as that. Cause it'll just wind up in your medicine. Might add to the flavor. It sure can't hurt the flavor of it. Now y'all, I know most everybody dries all their plant material. Um, there's nothing against drying it. If you want to dry it, dry it. All you're doing when you dry a plant is removing the moisture out of it so that it don't start turning bad. Uh, when you pick it and you're immediately fixing to start making medicine, that is not necessary because all you're doing is removing moisture. Well, when you start heating this up, the moisture is going to start evaporating out of it. Oh, and th get this. With this, you're adding water into it. So why do you need it dried for that? Now, if you're doing an infused oil, you need the water out of it. So these are things to think about. I just see a lot of people that they think automatically, well, I just, you need to dry every plant before you do anything. Well, all drying a plant does, and I'm throwing these out, is remove moisture out of it, removes the water content out of it. Um, and, and when you're doing this, that is not necessary to extract the tea because you're getting the water soluble qualities out of it. Now in making this tar, principally in the short of it, all you're doing is you're taking this dark liquid 
and removing as much water as you can out of it till you're left with a really condensed, all the medicinal properties that are spread out over this volume of water are condensed way down to where you just need to take a little bit of it instead of drinking two or three cupfuls. When I put water in here and I start making a tea out of this, I can take a, a coffee cup like this, and I've got coffee in it right now, and dip me up about three coffee cups full and drink them, and I'm going to really feel the effects of this. Once I cook this all the way down, then I can take a half of a teaspoonful and get the same effect. So that's the short of what this process is. A lot of people has asked me about, well, how shelf stable is it? I have not set mine out on a shelf. This batch, I probably will, just to see what happens. Um, I have had mine in the refrigerator for over a year now. I made it last year about this time, and it has done very well. Uh, still use it occasionally. I don't use a lot of this, this medicine. Most of what I'm doing is for video purposes. Uh, I don't have a lot of chronic pain. I'm trying to help those of you that do. I was going to show you right here. Now, this jar I throw these in are not quite really clean, but this is seed that was off of the Lactuca canadensis I found. Had the really yellow uh, looking Lactucarium in it. So I'm going to finish chopping most of this up and get it started cooking, and then we're going to play with the juice. This knife's a whole lot sharper than this one. y'all we've got the water in here i've got it on high right now till we get it up to temperature and then we'll slowly cut this way back down because like i said you don't want to boil it um now in my last video you saw at the very end of it it boiled a little bit um when you boil this plant it don't just immediately like zap it and wipe it out it just starts slowly getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And the longer it boils, the weaker it gets. So if you boil it for, and the reason I really, really push don't boil it at all is because most of the time with this plant, it's a long process and you're going to turn it on and you're going to walk off and do something else and then you're going to come back to it. And if you come back to it and it's boiling, you don't know how long it's boiled. So keep that temperature low. Now when you get it down to that saucepan stuff and you go over a hot spot, it's going to, it's going to boil temper. That's not technically going to kill a whole lot. Yes, it does hurt it a little bit. So keep that in mind. Uh, I know I preached in the last video, don't boil it, don't boil it. And then at the end, everybody's like, well, that was boiling it. Well, I know that. I left that in there for the purpose of you understanding how easy it is for this to come to a boil and you knowing that it don't need to. Okay. We want to play with this juicer now. Oh, um, I had several people ask me, what happens when you use the juicer? Well, y'all, I don't have any idea. Now, I, this juicer, when I got it, I bought it at a thrift store. It was missing this little piece on the back. I fabricated this out of sheet metal, so I don't have the precise cup that goes with it, all that jazz, so what, what I'm gonna do is put this jar right up here under it. I wish I had something to kind of hold that jar. So let's see what happens here. Y 
all I'm gonna open this up because I don't know where all the pulp is going and I'm afraid I am gonna burn my machine up yeah it's getting very hot so this is not working very well with it but it's something else to think about See, it is really gumming it up bad. So, that's how you run over stuff, not watching where you're going. He just realized he's about to hit the flowers. All right, I got this cleaned back up. Um, so we're going to try this again. I'm going to try not to force it down in there like I was doing. Oh. I didn't want to destroy my machine. Maybe I'm putting too much in there at a time. Let's, let's put just a little bit, all right? It didn't even try to juice that. It just swung it out. And, uh, we're going to take a piece of this stalk. quick dripping right here a second I was gonna show you that is what we got right there out of that stalk and that handful of plant so it's still dripping let me get this under there y'all that might be the way to do this stalk I don't know I mean but you're not getting the white like to carry them you're so we, we experiment right here all right if I burn up my juicer, it ain't going to matter a whole lot because, y'all, I don't use a juicer for much of nothing anyway. But look at this. Good Lord, y'all. I mean, it gummed it up bad. It, that stuff don't, that pulp don't come out of there good. That's right here, and I'm going to. All right, this is gonna be the last thing I try, and this is a lot more tender, and let's see if it works. That seems to do better. Okay, it is juicing it. Now once you get to the real hard woody part of it, it's the juicer's not any good anymore. Okay, here's my question. So where's the medicinal properties? Because we're extracting some green water. Obviously there's probably some medicinal properties in that. I would say I'm sure there are. How much are we losing in this though because we're not extracting it with water? You know, I mean, it need a little warm water, I think to extract all the medicinal properties. So how much of the medicinal is over here? 
Uh, this is draining. It is. Not to mention what kind of a mess that we get. Look at this, y'all. I mean, that is dry as a powder house now. Y'all know what a powder house is? Anyway, this this right here seems to be a lot of trouble to me. Just throw it in a boiler and or crock pot. Crock pot's probably the most practical. I do. Okay, so I am I'm gonna show you what we got. That is just out of that stalk. So you make your own mind up if you want to play with the juicer, more power to you. I'm not going to sit here and say that it won't work, okay? It's just a lot more trouble than I'm willing to fool. Because you look at all this cleaning up i got to do with this piece of junk. I, I'm not a fan of the juicer in, in general. I am just... <laughs> look at all the work now to clean all this mess up. Mm, not worth it to me. You do like you want to, though. It may, may be you may think it is great and grand and love it. Oh, uh, so anyway, let's get back to cooking out here. Y'all, I have a little bit of plantain right here. I am, I'm going to see if I can make some salve out of it green while I'm doing this other video and have this going. I've used the plant, seed, head, everything. And I'm going to put in this double boiler. So I am going to pack all of this down in here. I do not know that this works. This is an experiment, so I'm just throwing this in here because I mentioned I was gonna make some salve. Oh, so I just wanted to see what it does. Everybody says you gotta dry it first. I, I don't know, you very well may have to. We're gonna see. Okay, I am turning it down. I see that water moving just a little bit. See them little bit of slight bubbles in it. We don't want it to boil, so I'm bringing it down. Bring this temperature down low. We'll keep an eye on it. This is some plantain salve I am basically experimenting with. So I'm gonna see about straining all of it into here. I've gotta to try to figure out a way to extract as much of the oil as I can. I don't have any kind of a press that I want to put oil in. Now, if it was water, I have a French press in the house I would use, but I don't want to French press oil through it. I'm sure it would be better if it was brown. And then I'm going to strain more of the plant material out, probably. I don't know. I may leave it in there. It won't hurt nothing. And this is just a bonus, y'all. We focusing on this over here, this plant of wild lettuce that is cooking. What I'm going to do is get my hands all greasy. I'm just going to tell you. Look at there. That was the simplest way to do that. Yeah, I got nasty. 
it worked. <laughs> so while this is still, now they are still some plant material, but y'all, that is very, very dark. All right, where's my rag? Y'all, I went to the thrift store and I found me some dark, thick glass containers. I'm going to store my dried herb in these because these clear ones, your herb will bleach out. I'm going to use this one anyway because I like these lids. And they was, I got $3, $2.50 and $3 and $3 and then check this thing out. Y'all, I love thrift stores. I just got to get on Amazon and order me a globe for that lamp. That is a very cool lamp. I may leave it out here. I don't know. Look, I'm getting some more oil there. Now, I don't know. You want to make this about 50-50. About so you need, there's about a good handful of oil. We're going to do, and these are beeswax pellets, y'all. I'm going to do a few more. I'd rather have it a little thicker so it ain't so greasy. Uh, I ordered these on Amazon. I'll link some of this stuff. Uh, now, I am using just no cheap olive oil to make this. Now, I made this out of wet plant material, like fresh plant. And we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to experiment to see how it works. That's why I didn't make no more than I made. I have people messaging me. From my last video where I made the salve and begging for it. And that salve that I had wasn't as strong as this is going to be. This is, I cooked this all day. It is late this afternoon and, and I've been letting this stuff simmer all day. Now this wild lettuce, y'all I am most likely going to strain all this out here in a little bit. And we're going to put it in a slow cooker and I may leave it in a crock pot with a lid off all night and let it condense down that way. And do this a lot slower than the way I did it last time because I cooked it, I was pushing it, trying to hurry up and get it done. And if I get out here and start talking them chickens, they get really excited. But for redneck purposes, I know everybody ain't gonna get on Amazon and order these nifty little cans with the lids. Well, y'all, old tuna can works really good because you can, uh, a mason jar lid will go right on top of it. If you have to kind of bend this a little bit for it to screw down on there, usually I just kind of shove them down on it and it will seal up. So that's what we're gonna pour all this into right now. All right, that's all there is to that. We'll let that solidify. Okay. Let me go ahead and turn this off. Ah. Oh. This is just to help keep. That is not going to be enough. All right. All right. Bigger pot, y'all. I got another. Let me let me go get my other pot. I got another stock pot. I should have got it to begin with. Okay, so I had this one in the pottery shop. Let me go ahead and pour this. You see how dark that liquid is, y'all? This is going to be a good batch. Let me hang this under there. All right. I got that all on my fingers. Here for a second. We 
want that hot plate off. I'm finna go ahead and unplug it. Done with that. Uh, I'm gonna mash this plant material just a little bit. Cause we're greedy and we don't want to waste none, you know? All right. A French press or something would be ideal. Oh, yeah, that ain't going. We get just a little bit more juice. Not enough really for us to cry about. We're going to dump it, y'all. We got more than enough juice to cook down. That is what we left with. We have got just plant material. And I don't know in here it's dark, y'all. You probably can't see. Okay, y'all. In the last video that I did that I made this car. At this point, we started cooking it in a bigger pan like we strained it out and we kept cooking it down and condensing it in this pot I did not do it as long what I am doing today is in my mind a simpler process but a longer process I was trying to hurry up this method is gonna be a good bit safer for you however this particular pot this is an older we have several crock pots this is an older one that we have Thus the reason I didn't mind getting it bringing it out here uh, So I'm gonna pour this warm liquid into this crock pot All right. And it is almost slam full I have got it on low I Want you to understand I have got it on low Oh Last video, when I was trying to condense it down and thicken it in a saucepan, you seen it boil a little bit. We done talked about this. So this method, we're going to let it condense in here. I may have to turn it on, just keep warm, and let it go all night. I don't know at what point it's starting to steam. And uh, I've got a little bit of plant material. I'm going to get that out as I can. I'm going to cut this light off because I don't want bugs in it. I may get me a piece of window screen that I have and put over this to keep anything from getting in it, but I want the water to be able to evaporate out. So you've got to keep the lid off. Uh, and this is a safer method of doing it. And we're going to let this go all night. I'll pick you back up tomorrow when it's done condensed down. I'm going to stay out here. I say I'm going to stay. I'm going to come back and forth out here tonight and check on it and make sure it's not boiling in case I need to turn this down because each crock pot is a little bit different you've got to figure out and i done heard people say oh my crock pot a bowl well this one right here will boil too you can boil water in this crock pot so we're putting it over here on like keep warm and if it starts getting too hot i'll have to do something different as of right now this is the plan so hang with us we're probably going to shut the video off for today and pick you back up in the morning and uh and we'll see where we at Okay, we are next morning. This has processed at this point has been going about 24 hours. Um, I came out and checked on it as soon as I got up just to make sure it wasn't boiling. It has not. Now, I have got it on low. I could turn it up and probably speed it up, but I think this cooker will boil it, and I'm trying desperately not to do that. But we have condensed down about two inches this pot was almost slam full so in in 12 hours it has dropped down about two inches so as of right now there's still in this particular pot there's still this much liquid in there which is not quite a finger's length so my plan at this point, this is a very lengthy process. This is probably the safest process. I am going to just let this sit and cook the rest of today. I, I will be in and out out here. I have some buckskin that I am pulled out of the freezer that I am working on. Uh, I have some knives that I am working on. I have one 
So I'm going to be back and forth out here. Plus, I really need to be making some pottery. So I, uh, I'm going to just let this cook. I'll pick y'all back up later this evening. And I'm going to start getting some herbs that I have dried. I dried some wild lettuce. I'm probably going to put it in a bag, though, because there's a good bit of it. Um, I had some people that wanted some, and I may dry some and sell it. I don't know. I don't know if I can get in trouble selling herbs or not like that. I really don't know what the laws are on that. And that is why I have been hesitant fooling with it. I'm not claiming to be a doctor. I am not claiming that it is medicine. It is just something I have if you want it. Um, and seeds, I've had people ask about seeds. I really have not found a good way to collect because here's my deal, a plastic bag, Humidity, it gets wet, it's tough. A paper bag is ideal. Well, guess what? We had like an inch of rain last night. Well, probably half inch, but it rained hard, stormed late yesterday evening. Paper bag would have been sopped, soaked everything. I mean, it, it just, that's not, so. I really don't have a good way to collect the seeds um, off of them. I'll try if I am successful at some point, but I really don't have virosa. Uh, I have Cereola, Canadensis, Floridana, and uh, I have Canadensis, Floridana, Cereola, and there was another one that I had found. And, and y'all, my ID is not like a hundred percent guaranteed that is correct if anybody knows a book that has the flora in it to where you can look at different species and say okay this is what determines this is this species and this is what determines this is this species and has all that information in it i would greatly love to have those books there is some volumes of the flora of north america and the books are about a hundred bucks a piece and they're the old books and there's like a whole big volume of them and I can't afford them. If somebody's got them and wants to give them up and send them to me, I would love to have them. Uh, <laughs> just can't afford to buy them. But anyway, we're gonna let this cook. I'm gonna quit rambling on and, and we'll see y'all in a little while. I did just think about, I wanted to show you the plantain salve, what it turned out like. So this is pure plantain. Uh, we're going to do a whole nother video making it uh, with the Seth Hill in it and some honey stuff. Y'all, we're about halfway through the day. It's almost one o'clock now. And we are about an inch and a quarter deep on this stick. So you can see this. This is a very dark, still very much a liquid. We're just continuing to let it cook. So put my stick over there. And you see, I got my jars up here, man. I am, y'all, I am really proud of my jars. Colored, I'm going to get them filled up with herbs here pretty soon. We might do them all in another video. Okay, y'all, this has been cooking just in the crock pot for 24 hours. And I'm covering it up. Now, there is like right about an three quarters of an inch to an inch of liquid left in there. So I don't want it to get down to it dries up tonight while I'm in the bed asleep. So I'm cutting it off and I'm just gonna let it stay like it is. I covered it up. I don't have the glass lid out here to it. I didn't want bugs getting in it. So I covered it up with this cardboard and a board that'll keep anything from getting in it. And then in the morning, I'll turn it back on and I'll watch it throughout the day. So, so far we at like 72 hours in this process, but I have not had to even mess with it, okay? I just put it in there and turn it on, walked off and left it. So that is the beauty of this. I don't have to babysit it. I'll pick you back up in the morning whenever we turn it back on and see what's going on then. All right, y'all, this stuff is getting pretty close. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how many hours we are. I cut it off. This is the end of the third day, but I cut it off last night so it stayed off for like 12 hours. So, oh, I want, I'm going to dip some up in a spoon. This is what we're looking like, y'all. 
still very much a liquid oh so it is not quite ready to do and and this there's a little bit you see that that is some plant material let me do this now y'all can see this is some plant material that is still on that spoon oh um, but you see how deep we are and y'all see how black that is I mean it is a and I'm going to leave this plant material I think I don't know That's, I know you professionals are going to want to get all of that out I'm trying to see in film so it ain't really let me do it like this. Yeah, no. I may squeeze that juice back in there. I may leave that juice. They, and there's not a lot of it, but it was... I'm probably going to leave it because there's a lot of medicine cooked into it at this point you see that the, you talking about some strong and you see how much it well it's hard to do stuff one handed and if I put that camera back over there on that tripod see how much I'm squeezing out of that I just want to see how strong it is. So I'm going to eat them pieces of plant. They want to be cooked. They've been cooking for three days. <laughs> this is the bowl I'm going to put this in. I have another bowl just like it that I have some more in. So... The big question that I kept getting, I know I've already answered this, over and over was how much do you take? Well, usually what I do is I take that spoon and I scrape up a gob on the end of it, about the size of the end of my finger, you know? What would be a large peel? And I just swallow it. Now you can take that and dissolve it into a glass of water make a tea out of it all you're doing is rehydrating it uh, the purpose for doing this medicine this way and y'all that side of it has already got some tar cake to it I'm gonna have to be I'm gonna have to scrape this like really really good to get that out of it. and I may not ever get that out of that pot right but um uh, the purpose for doing this medicine this way is to preserve it. It is not that it is better medicine. Like I said, the most effective way is to lick it straight off the stalk when you first pick the plant or walk out there and leave the plant growing. Lance the edges of it and make it start bleeding that white like the carom and lick that off and that is the most effective medicine easiest to use no work no nothing the next best thing is just make you a strong tea grab you a handful of plant put it in some water and warm it up drink it but now through the winter when you ain't got plants growing everywhere this is the best way because you can't hardly preserve a tea now i have not fooled them up with tinctures i have made some tinctures last year but y'all i make them with apple cider vinegar and i i'm getting to where i really can't stomach that it just turns my stomach with a golden rod especially and this wild lettuce now some of the other plants is not so bad but so anyway i am watching this so when i get ready to actually like extract it out 
I'll I'll bring y'all back and and let y'all watch do that. Okay. All right. Hopefully y'all can see somewhat. Let me turn this other light on too. Oh. Over here you can see on this edge there is a lot of tar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start scraping this off now. It is about nine o'clock Sunday night. I started this whole process Friday morning and I cut it off last night. So I could have let it cook all night last night and it would have been done this morning when I got up. But I was not sure how long it was gonna take and you can't bet on your time frame being exactly the same because your crock pot may not be exactly uh, at the same temperature mine is. You follow what I'm telling you? So what I'm doing is I am, and see this is, this is thick, thick, thick. I need a little small spatula. Maybe you can. Oh, over here, see the liquid is, is kind of down to one corner. I put, I put a stick under this and cocked it over to one side. I did not mention that earlier. All right. Putting that stick under there. Hardest parts, it won't be stick to every utensil you got. But one more thing, y'all. At best, this is still just a mild pain reliever. This is not like heroin or opium or like, you know, you're going to use this and just get stoned. No. It's a little better than Tylenol. <laughs> Hate to bust your bubble, but it's a good bit stronger than Tylenol. But it's not like Darvacet or Lower Tab or mm -mm, not even close, not even close to Xanax. I know a lot of people watch these videos and they think, oh, I'm gonna make wild lettuce and it's gonna solve all my problems. It's, it's a mild pain reliever at best. Okay, y'all, I am going to pull this out as a syrup. It's gonna, it's gonna be about enough to fill this bowl slam full. And if it's more than that, I have some slightly larger bowls and I may do something different with it, but I, I'm, I'm ready to get it out. Um, there's several other methods of putting this on wax paper and putting it in a dehydrator. There's just leaving it on, on a wax paper put it in like a refrigerator. That fan in the refrigerator circulates air, it will dry things out. Moving air will dry this out some more. But I, I don't really, it's, it's fairly thick. And I don't know that I want it as like a real hard tar like I did the last one. So I'm thinking maybe I want to put this in some type of a bottle to where it stays a liquid, but yet a really, really condensed liquid. So this is one of those times where a matter of your choice and your preference is going to be how you do this. Uh, now, when I get to the end of this process, and this is what happened to me last time when I boiled it, I get really excited, like I'm ready to get it done. I'm ready to get over this. And you've been fooling with it for three days. Which this is not that bad because I haven't really been fooling with it. It's just been doing that. I come by and check on it and stir in it and make sure it's okay. But, you know, I'm not doing a whole lot with it. That all being said, uh, and I've got this on a knife I was digging with and now on this spatula. But what I'm going to do is dip this up as this tar. And I feel like, honestly, y'all... Look how, look how that's, it is black as midnight. Oh, one of my reasons for getting it out as a liquid is I really think I can come near getting it out of this, oh, oh, 
crock pot this way. I had thought about trying to pour it, but and y'all, I know this video, I can't help it. They're gonna be long. There's no way around it. But if you show everything that goes on and, and get to talk and carry on and I had somebody come in the other day and said, you talk to me, you act too much. And I said, that's why most of the people watch my channel to hear me yell. I like to talk and that's why I got a YouTube channel. Y'all, we have got, we got a bowl slam full of this now. It is going to thicken up. I can tell you it is. Cause it's gumming up on that spoon real good. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to extract everything I can get. So I am scraping it all down to the bottom. And there is a lot in this pot. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off. Ain't no needing it staying warm. Y'all, and this, this smells strong. If you do this in your house, let me mention. If you do this in your house, it is going to smell up your house. Okay? Follow what I'm telling you here, hand. <laughs> Y'all, I was thinking earlier, if I had to put a price on this stuff, for the time that is involved in it, y'all, you come near going to the group to the drugstore and buying medicine. Cause I promise you, you don't want to buy this for me. I'm high on it. This has been a long process, and and you don't get a whole lot for three days worth of work. A hundred dollars wouldn't buy this bowl for me right now. I'm telling you, it wouldn't. So you better figure out how you better watch and learn how to make your own. Cause you can make it for free. My time is more valuable than that to me. Some folks' time ain't that valuable. And mine may not be as valuable as I think it is, but that's the price I put on it. <laughs> See, that's, a, that's an advantage of being your own boss. You price stuff to where you don't have to do it, and then if you have to do it, it's worth doing. That's how that works. Because if you price it cheap, somebody will say, oh, I'd just rather let you do it than me have food with it. And I don't want food with it. <laughs> I know I'm just running on, running off at the mile. I told y'all I like to talk. Boy, this is a lot of, lot of effort, though, just to get get this off this spoon. And I got a mess made, ain't no doubt. I won't never get all of that out of there. So I need to get, don't you say it? I know somebody thought it. They thought about that old Hank Jr. line. I that ain't what I was referring to. You good and well, I was going to lick his spoon. Like making brownies or something. Well, y'all, this is the completion of us making this tar again in this uh, crock pot. So, uh, Easiest process right here. This is the easiest way to make this. It is the most time consuming. The last time I did this, I sped cooked it. I cooked it over fire, cooked it over higher heat, and I cooked it in one day. Whole process in one day. This time it took me three days to do it. Um, 
So you're looking at a good 72 hours at least. Um, probably longer than that. I, like I said, it is Sunday night. I started Friday morning. I cooked the liquid in a stainless steel pot for 12 hours and then I strained it and poured the contents and filled this crock pot up Friday night and I cooked it all night Friday night all day Saturday and then I cut it off Saturday afternoon and I turned it back on Sunday morning and cooked it all day in here Sunday and it is Sunday night so if that concludes because I may get my hours mixed up that way you know exactly what went on so this is a, another way to do this. It is not the only way to do it. You can come up with some more methods, use alcohol, use whatever you want to do. This is just another method for doing it. It's a little more safer and not running a higher risk. So thank y'all for watching the Spirit of the Outdoors, making pain medicine out of wild lettuce. We'll see you next time. Remember, the best way to do things is the way you like to do it. We'll see y'all. Y'all have a good one.